Hi, uh, I made those weird Rayman videos for a while, and I decided I want to do some sort of wrap-up to that. Uh, didn't really want to do a full edited thing, so I'm gonna play Rayman Redemption while just talking about some ideas. Uh, yeah, that, that's more or less the uh, thing that's going on. I'm not as good at talking without a script as you may have noticed. Uh, so yeah, I guess we start. Uh, yeah. I guess the first thing to bring up would be uh, Ubisoft is kinda shit. <laughs> and that's um, not really a controversial thing to say right now, I suppose. It, it's a games company in general, and they've always had a bit of a major problem with... Uh, well, maybe not always, but they've had a major problem lately, at least, with just treating employees like absolute shit. And Ubisoft has, of course, also got the sexual misconduct allegations on top of that to speak of. Uh, and I don't know, for some reason I seem to talk about the companies which have that specific allegation so far, but let's try and avoid that a bit more in the future. Uh... I've already kind of covered this a little bit in the Rayman Legends video, and I'll post the sources for that again. Uh, but on top of that, I guess I also need to bring up that Michelle Ancel was kind of brought under allegation as well. Uh, now, I think I've kind of expressed a, f a fairly fair amount of fondness for him over the series, and I do have that. I like that he is quite consistently driven by art over money, essentially. Um, but I I don't want to completely dismiss this either as an as a as an allegation essentially. Uh, it isn't confirmed, and Michelle Ansel, when it did come up, uh, is argued his side of the case too. And we shouldn't just dismiss that outright. What we in uh, so I don't want to just take his side either. I guess if there was something that is worth cautioning in general, I would say that it's don't assume that somebody's good just because you like their work. <laughs> and I don't, I mean, that's probably a bit of a reductive way of talking about the problem in general, because people aren't just good or bad. There's undeniably a lot of things he do he's done which are very good, which have done a lot to uh, push forward games in a lot of ways, and I don't think what he's saying in response can be classified as a lie if we find that most of what the Liberation article written about him turns out to be true. Uh, if that makes sense, I'm essentially saying that there can be just interpretations of events which mean that in some ways both of them are still telling the truth. <laughs> and that might sound like a cop-out answer, probably is to an extent, but uh, it's sort of interesting how people remember things differently, I guess you could say. And... Yeah, you've got to be careful about not putting too much stake in taking a side with these things in general. Um, although, mm, I guess there's a lot that goes into that. Um, what, I, what I would say is that the general allegations seem to be that he was inconsistent, uh, constantly changing his mind, and sort of forcing people... Uh, to give up a lot of work very suddenly, or just sort of asking unreasonable things, and he responds to this by saying he wasn't actually part of management, he made suggestions, and management were of the opinion, and management were basically responsible for actually implementing his suggestions, or not, for that matter, for actually making decisions about the game. He also said that he didn't just willy-nilly change his mind, he actually quite often would fight for things to remain how they were, uh, and sometimes people would make decisions despite that. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's sort of that sort of thing. There was also some, some things about whether or not uh, a demo for Beyond Good and Evil 2 was real, and generally these allegations, the stories being told, were concerned with Beyond Good and Evil, not with Rayman, which I guess is worth pointing out. Um, it's sort of hard to really put my thoughts into good words just when riffing like this, I suppose, but uh, I don't want to say that one has to be right and one wrong. It seems like there is room for the idea that... for the idea that uh, essentially, yeah, he didn't have... he didn't have the right to command people, essentially, uh, to just do what he wanted. Uh, so yeah, he wasn't management, as he said, and yet they also pointed out that he had an immense amount of respect at the company, so it still might have ended up being along the lines of... 
of uh, what he said basically ended up happening. He had a disproportionate effect on the project regardless of that. And I don't think there's any real controversy in saying that Michel Ancel is uh, quite a well-known figure and has a lot of power at Ubisoft. Uh, what... Uh, what... I guess... Uh, what, I've sort of lost it now. Um, uh, da, 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 da. What this essentially, I guess you could say, means is that... Uh, what he's saying could be technically true, and perhaps it's also true that Liberation should have probably clarified these things a lot more if this was true, should have looked into it a bit more, should have done a bit more investigation. But you want to... I guess you could say there's room for there to be truth in both stories. And again, I just want to be very careful about cautioning... Uh, about being too sympathetic towards what public figures say uh, over what people who don't have that sort of publicity say. Uh, it is worth noting that they only interviewed, I think it was 15 people out of 150, so yeah, there's plenty of room for this simply to not, uh, not, not be the majority opinion among the team. Um, but I don't want to just kind of leave it at that, because if the 15 people they did interview consistently said this, and assuming that, uh, oops, assuming that Liberation was is was just telling the truth about their, about how they, well, maybe not telling the truth, assuming they were being completely open about how they handled the investigation, then, um, well, I guess the 15 people very well might be a good sample size, especially considering they told stories which don't, which concern other people. Which, yes, may have been lies, but again, there's sort of an element of why, why would they do that? Uh, and people like to say that there's jealousy of, like, uh, big public figures and everything, and maybe that's true to an extent, but it's just sort of hard to believe for me that, um, that accounts for accounts for everything that you typically see in this, if that makes sense. Uh, mm, yeah, this is probably why I should do scripts, I suppose. I'm not, I'm sort of rambling a lot already. Uh, what, what it amounts to is just a lot of mess, essentially. And I'm trying not to explicitly take a side, but I'm also trying... I'm also trying to be quite honest about how these things play play out and be careful about being too sympathetic to those who do actually have more power, I guess you can say. I mean, there's been stories uh, quite often, like Tabuscus and whatnot, of people um, having a public platform and people giving them far more benefit of the doubt based on that and essentially trying... Ooh, shit. <laughs> essentially try trying to come up with whatever reason they can to say that these people are fine when, yeah, the people who don't have such a public platform are being quite open about what happened. Uh, at the same time, you've got to be careful about not doing that. I suppose it is also true that the people being interviewed were anonymous, so they didn't have as much risk of backlash compared to, compared to, like, a lot of these other situations, so it might just not really apply as much here. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, that's gone on quite a long about that. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's talk about Rayman again. That's much more fun than this. Uh, so, um, in a way, the experience of doing these videos is always quite weird. Uh, if you compare it to Warcraft, which I did last, which was, in a way, a rediscovery effort for me in a lot of in a lot of things, because I've, I've played Warcraft 3 for so long, but I hadn't played Warcraft 2 for a long time there, and I'd never played Warcraft 1 before, so it was sort of like capturing a lot of my initial impressions of those games, but Rayman, I did actually play all these games before I decided to do the video rather recently, uh, and it was sort of interesting how, how my opinions of them were sort of even shaped by the video, because I had what I thought were pretty solid, rock-solid opinions of them already when it came out, when I start decided to do this, but then after playing them and uh, analysing them and stuff, I 
I sort of gained new appreciations for them here and there, as well as sort of just suddenly becoming aware of uh, flaws they had that I just hadn't really thought of too much before. Uh, what I said in the intro video was that all the games in this series have merit, have things that they do better than all the others essentially, uh, and all of them have things that they don't do as well. Like if I was to quickly summarize that, Rayman 1 has really good boss fights essentially, and um, sort of just really surprisingly tight mechanics, plus probably having my overall favorite soundtrack, uh, but it's also stupidly hard and not always fair in the slightest, and I played the PC version, which is a which, a, which is a dulled down version of it. Uh, Rayman 2 is probably the most clunky to play, the one that's aged the worst, essentially, but um, just in terms of mechanics, like, the platforming doesn't have that sort of sense of weight that you get from the later games, nor is it it's kind of prone to just kind of doing things a bit weird now and then, and the combat is just fucking boring. But, um, but it's got the best story and the best atmosphere by quite a big margin, I think. And it's kind of fascinating. It's also just the most interesting in how it explores themes, I guess. And I kind of find it fascinating that I said that it was probably my favorite in the intro video. Uh, and now I'm saying that no, it's actually definitely my favorite. Like, the video that I made of it sort of gave me an appreciation for a lot of the things it did well, especially that stuff that I kind of felt about the Cave of Bad Dreams was like, that wasn't pre-planned, I just sort of realized all that shit while writing it and was like, oh my god, that's just so cool. And it's, I'm not sure if it was intended by the developers or anything, it's just sort of how I'm interpreting the game, if, perhaps, but I don't know, I don't view that as an invalid reason to think that it's really awesome and uh, I hope that people kind of agree with it vaguely. Uh, Rayman 3 sort of of course just has the specific fuck-ups. Uh, the, the treating rape as a joke being the most obvious one. Uh, it's over... Uh, overly ironic sense of humor, which always felt a bit cynical to me, like it was just sort of being like, this is funny, right? Just laugh at it and we'll make the game funny without really having um, a desire to be funny because making people laugh is fun, I guess. Um, I'm not saying that the game was made without passion, there's a lot of evidence of that, but I kind of feel like the comedy was put in just because they thought it would be expected in a way rather than rather than being a sort of part of the vision at its core. Um, and then there's also just like bugginess and slight signs, signs of sloppiness within the game. But it's also just kind of interesting in a lot of other ways. Like its combat system is good and pretty different. Like it's built on Rayman 2's system but made good and made just a lot more interesting with the way that you can direction your attacks and combine it combine it with the combat fatigues and different enemies. Uh, and Rayman and Rayman 3 just ends up being the game which just has the most art, I guess, like the other like uh, that might not be the right way of putting it, but you know, like if we view I guess it's, I'm viewing that in the difference of art versus craft, where art is about exploring something uh, and craft is about doing it well. And generally, as you probably noticed with how I keep emphasizing polish, Rayman is a series that mechanically is a bit more interested in craft, I would argue, than art. It's very interesting in art visually and musically, and it's also uh, Rayman 2 was very interested in art, art thematically, uh, but mechanically I'd generally say that's not really how this series has worked, and Rayman 3 is the exception to that. It's quite the artistic game in a lot of ways. Uh, and that sort of gives it a lot of credit. That, that gives it a lot that makes it really charming and really likeable despite its shortcomings. Um, and to be clear, a lot of it is also very well crafted. I don't want to just say that there's not any any good design in there, and it's all just relying on novelty. But yeah, that's more or less it. Uh, Rayman Origins is the most clearly focused game of the series, with its absolute commitment and understanding to speed can be a lot of fun, to get players to just experience the moments as they come, and get them to sort of 
shut down and just embrace the instinctual playstyle. Uh, and while that's great, that gives it such a cool identity and makes it so well suited for, for you if you're in the right mindset, it, of course, limits its ability to handle situations which don't mesh with that mindset, like the two big things I pointed out, uh, where the sexism of the female portrayals and the boss fights are bad. And in a way, both of these things can maybe be tied to that, because they didn't have... If you're trying to constantly create this atmosphere of, um, of keeping players invested in the moment, of keeping them in the flow state mindset, you can't really flesh out your female characters too much, or any of your characters. Uh, now this is kind of compounding on already weird things like all the women being damsels in distress and all that, but if if they had more- like Lee from Rayman 2 was also effectively a damsel in distress, but the fact that the game wasn't so committed to the flow state meant that you could stop and have a conversation with her, and you could bring her back later and call back to those moments much more easily without it just coming across as, um, well, you know, jammed in, because, you know, the nymphs do come back later as well, but they just sort of moved on from. Lee having more ability to talk gave her... Uh, gave her character beyond just her initial status as a damsel in distress, which the nymphs weren't afforded, and you could argue that that comes back to Rayman Origins' flow state playstyle. Uh, and then Rayman Legends is kind of the relaxing game, the jack-of-all-trades of it, of them. Uh, which it's really good at. It's sort of bizarre how how well it achieves so much of what the other games did, while while also not really seeming to grab any of their weaknesses. Like I didn't really have anything extremely wrong to say about Rayman Legends com compared to the other games. While I certainly had a lot of things extremely right to say about it. Uh, like, you know, it manages to capture most of the flow state of Origins, most of the, uh, well, not the boss fights, I suppose, but that sort of, I guess the music and the art value that I liked from Rayman 1 is still very much captured, and even if not the boss fights in terms of design, it still managed to capture that sort of build-up to the boss fights, which Rayman 1 often did so well. Uh... And it managed to it managed to have a much better sense of humor than Rayman 3, and thanks to the Murphy mechanics, it also managed to do something a little bit innovative, a little bit interesting. Uh, I guess it didn't necessarily capture the same level of thematic storytelling as Rayman 1, but that's where 20,000 Lums Under the Sea actually does kind of stand out, because um, in that... Oh shit. Oh well. Uh, in 20,000 Lums Under the Sea, you've got this whole story they set up uh, quite well, really. Um, uh, you know, the sort of spy movie story that you get to play through, which isn't necessarily thematic, but does quite an excellent job of telling a story. A story through the gameplay and capturing a feeling, even if it's not maybe I should take the photographers, capturing a feeling, even if it's not necessarily got too much of a deeper meaning. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just got, oh my god, <laughs> it's just got a bit of everything, I guess, and that's what makes Raymond Legends good, but it's got a bit of everything without losing, without embracing the bad sides of things, it's just so good. <laughs> in so many ways. Um, but, yeah, but it sort of doesn't... It doesn't have anything too wrong with it, but I guess you could say that it doesn't necessarily... I need to slow down. It doesn't necessarily capture all the, all the deeper feelings you'd get. That's completely rubbish. A weird sentence. Let me... I'm going to take a minute to think about how I want to phrase that, sorry. Um, I guess it just doesn't necessarily reach the same peaks. Like, if you take... T 
take uh, the initial level of how good the other games do their various strengths, uh, and then compare that to the initial level of how Rayman Legends approaches that strength, it will be about as good. But if you then take the extremes, like um, like not not even the extremes as in the end game content, but sort of the extracurricular, the parts that you might need to think about the game a bit more, or you know, in the case of Rayman Origins, literally uh, play basically the alternative ending to get the extreme, the extremes of what it achieves. That's where Rayman Legends just can't quite keep up, and so. While it is a very good comfort game, and very much able to adapt to you on so many levels, if you really are a specific type of player, odds are one of the other games will just fit for you a little better than it will, if that makes sense. Um, but simultaneously, if you're a more general player, then it probably is just the most sensible place to go. Uh, and then there's actually Rayman Redemption, this game here I'm playing, which obviously has a lot of similar perks to Rayman 1, uh, and generally speaking, I'd say it's a better version of Rayman 1, but I would hesitate to say that it's just better, period. There are still a few things that Rayman 1, um, I'd say does better. And again, it's the boss fights. Now, Rayman Redemption actually does have probably the second best boss fights in the series. Like, they're really good here, but I just don't feel like they're quite as good as the original Rayman 1. Like, Mr. Stone is my favourite boss fight in the in the series, I think he's just so much fun. It's just pretty much exactly how a boss should be designed to me. And this version of Mr. Stone in Rayman Redemption is much, much easier, which isn't necessarily a bad thing considering how hard the game is, but also just too much waiting around. And then the section at the end where he where he loses his body and starts jumping around is kind of a fun novelty, but it's just not as compelling as beating him as his final phase being him at full power and trying to overcome that desperately, whereas the way the Rayman Redemption one tends to end is just sort of like, uh, more like, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's this sort of like a joke, I guess, and it tends to just be you quickly get into a rhythm and just beat him super fast. And then there's also the interactive storytelling, which is actually good timing because this guy's sort of an example. This this guy here is made into a boss fight in Rayman Redemption, as you're seeing now, whereas he's sort of just a creature you encounter in Rayman, where you've just got to move past him. And that's sort of more compelling to me, because it just sort of implies a little bit of life in the world, which got a bit aggravated with Rayman coming near, but wasn't inherently encouraging you to see it as as, as, this, as a bad guy. It's just sort of a creature you encountered. And, um, yeah, like, it's, it's a little bit weaker, I guess, to, to reduce this guy to a boss fight. It feels very video gamey, like, oh, there's a creature here we, that's, uh, cool. And so we need to make it into a part of the game in a very predictable way, which Rayman 1, which might have just been for development time constraints, I think I've heard that somewhere. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll find a source for that. But for whatever reason, Rayman 1 didn't feel the need to reduce, reduce this creature to just being a boss fight. And it just felt more compelling to me. Uh, but a better example brings us back to Mr. Stone, I guess. Like, Mr. Stone, after you, when you first encounter him, you lose him by hiding in this little cave where Mr. Stone sort of loses track of where you are. He walks around for a bit trying to find you before finally just giving up and leaving. Whereas in Rayman Redemption, Mr. Stone just seems to sod off for no reason at all. Uh, and another example is the mosquito fight. When you first encounter him and he's, and he's chasing you with the big pineapple thing, uh, is it a pineapple? I don't know, the big spiky purple fruit. In uh, Rayman 1, you then get away with from him because he gets stuck in the vines. In Rayman Redemption, he just fl decides to fly away at some point. Uh, and this was actually done because there's a super secret power-up you can acquire if you go back after, after he flies away in Rayman Redemption. 
and so it's a kind of cool way to hide something, but it also just makes the world feel a little less coherent. Uh, and that's actually something... Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, actually, I'll just leave it at that, actually. I, th I think you're getting what I'm saying, even if I'm being a bit pedantic. I do still think Rayman Redemption is a much better game overall, uh, and did a brilliant job of ironing out a lot of Rayman 1's flaws, but I don't think it's right to just say that it's period better. Even then, there is room to call the first game better. Like, there is room for somebody to like the first game more, if that makes sense. And that's kind of what I always found so cool about Rain Man, I guess. Well, maybe not always, I don't remember what I really f thought of the series as a whole, at least not in this much detail as a kid. But it's what I found really cool about Rain Man when I replayed them recently and decided to make these videos. Uh, it's that idea that there's just kind of a unique area of joy that you'll encounter from playing each of them. And I thought, yeah, that's super awesome. Uh, and if there's an overall moral, it's just whatever you want to do with the game, make sure you do it well, because that's kind of what the games have have focused on for the most part, making sure that their music, their, their visuals, and their gameplay are good. Not necessarily unique on the basis of you've never seen this before, but unique on the basis that, oh my god, this is just completely polished to a T, and super enjoyable to come back to time and time again. And yeah, I think that adds up. I think that adds up to a lot. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, addressing now a few specific things, I guess, about some of the games. I, I kind of did Rayman 3 a bit dirty, which is interesting because as a general rule, uh, I don't know. I, w I didn't think Rayman 3's video would be as long as it did, but despite the fact that I got quite uh, busy with it in a lot of ways, um, Rayman 3 en ended up being one of the longer videos just because there was so much to say about it. Uh, and yet I find myself saying, oh, I actually missed something. And that's because I said that I wouldn't talk about the music in Rayman 3 because it more or less was just the same strength as Rayman 2, but there's actually one moment on retrospect that I think does warrant talking about a little bit, and that's sort of the snowboard race part. Uh, I guess I'll just edit in that music at this part so that you can hear it. Uh, but that music is this sort of really weird moment. You're right near the end of the game, and you're sort of approaching the big final, final base, like the, the villain's headquarters are literally right after the snowball race. And yet you get this moment which is just joyful, just like this absolutely this, like, this activity which is completely recreational, snowboarding, uh, even if it's, you know, not in-game, but, you know, typically that's how we think about it. And then music that sort of invokes this almost Christmassy f theme, I feel. I feel, like, action-y and, like, fun and fast pace and everything, but decisively not dark in any way, or, like... It's just sort of like a moment of pure euphoria. And... The music is a big part of what achieves that, and it's sort of this last moment of just embracing fun and beauty before we get to the to the end game, I guess, where we're gonna have to be dealing with some pretty nasty people for a while. <laughs> and it really works, it's just kind of giving you that last hurrah, like you know how music just before it will get to that big Ba 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 whatever <laughs> moment towards the end of the piece will often just be quiet for a little while, just kind of allow you to experience the other side of the other side of emotion, so that the ending, the ending where we really start going full on on the darker things in the case of Rayman Three really is allowed to land, and that's something that's kind of worth saying because. If Rayman 2 has a general problem with its structure, it's that it does kind of feel a bit rushed the more you get towards the end, uh, and and just sort of feels a bit more half-assed towards the end compared to the other games. Rayman 2 feels a bit like it just sort of is out of ideas, if that makes sense. Or it, maybe it's not out of ideas, but it doesn't really have time to realise those ideas fully. And I guess the snowboard race is an illustration that Rayman 3 didn't actually struggle with that problem. 
it manages to more or less maintain its level of quality right to the end. Uh, and I, I don't know, that's just sort of super cool, isn't it? <laughs> but my, my general point though was how the music in this case was used to make, to make sure that you remember the fun and the beauty of the world before you get to the end game, where you're at risk of just sort of being lost in darkness for a while. And that's something that I probably should have mentioned in the first video if we're talk since I talked it, since I considered music one of the key pillars to the series. It seemed a bit wrong to leave, leave out what Rayman 3 did actually do uniquely from that video. So here we are, recompensing now. Uh, recompending? That's not a word. Uh, uh reconciling, there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the other thing actually I should point out is that I made a mistake in the Rayman 2 video. I'm not really sure how I did this, but I said that Policus created the Lums, uh, and that's actually wrong. The Lums sort of, Policus was born of the Lums, and the Lums were sort of a natural energy to the world. Uh, the fairies did create the silver lums, and it is still true that green lums are just kind of unexplained. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's worth pointing out that I, I fucked up there. Don't, don't trust me for everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's kind of fun. These games are good. You know, I guess a good, <laughs> a good way to end, to end the discussion of them. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. Let's also bring up. Uh, since I'm playing Rayman Redemption, that the community is also kind of awesome. Uh, there's actually projects for both Rayman 2 and 3 to remake them in the community's image as well. In the community's image? That might not be a way of putting it. Uh, but yes, the community to basically remake them modern as well. And they're, they're not quite like this game, which was completely made by one person who was clearly very passionate about it. Uh, but nonetheless, they're still fan-made, and they're still doing some interesting things with them. Like, I think the Rayman 2, 2, when they showcased it, they had illustrated how they had expanded on the music so that it would be even more reactive to the level. Like, you know, um, instead of having a pirate theme come up when a pirate starts to fight you, there would be specific combat mu music for each level which blended more seamlessly with the music space with, with the level's bass track if that makes sense and so yeah I, I don't know how well these projects are going and I haven't checked on them for a while so I'm hoping they weren't I'm hoping they haven't been cancelled or something <laughs> in the meantime um but you know the community's already managed to finish one fan remake of the classic Rayman game so it's kind of exciting and I hope that goes somewhere uh, and I think that more or less sums up what I've got to say. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching if you did. And I'll do that thing where I say if you liked the video, then you know, like it. Except I'll do it in a weird squeaky voice for some reason. <laughs>